Hi, welcome back to Mark and Cindy's Food Forest in Lutz, Florida. I'm Tropical Fruit Man, and I know it's been a while, so we're back again with another video, finally, after some time. Today, we're going to look at the pineapple guava, actually also called the feoa. And these are a unique fruit. You don't see these out anywhere. They're hard to come by. And we're going to take a look at them today. Let's take a look at the tree here. You see some fruit on here, and we've actually had a good harvest this year. Over here is another one on here. Whoops, and that one just came off. It's ready. Look at that. And that's how you know when these are ready. When they fall to the ground is when they're ready and they're ripen and they're ready to eat. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tree here. And we're going to go ahead and talk about this tree. I love this tree for a couple of reasons, and I'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, the feoa, also known as the pineapple guava, it's grown as an ornamental. It is an evergreen. Uh, people like it for just the basic tree that it is, or a shrub. But actually, uh, they grow it for the fruit also. It's a very pretty tree, as you can tell. They're really neat looking. Uh, they're native to south, uh, southern Brazil, eastern Paraguay and Uruguay, and uh, northern Argentina and Colombia, you can find these. That's where they're native to. Uh, they can be grown, again, as a, a shrub or a tree, depending on how you want to prune it. Uh, grows to the size of a chicken egg, as you saw earlier. Those uh, feoas are actually smaller to the size of a chicken egg, some varieties. There's different varieties of these. I'm not sure which variety I have here. Uh, I got this from a fruit grower, uh, but I do not know which variety it is. But anyway, they basically uh, start flowering sometime in the uh, mid-spring and they're the most beautiful flowers you've ever seen. Very pretty and the actual petals are, are edible. Uh, so they start off in the spring and they start to ripen and fall off the tree by like September, October. So we're at here at the end of September right now. Uh, it's a subtropical plant but it can be grown in the tropics. From what I understand it requires at least 50 hours of winter chilling in order for it to fruit. So you need 50 hours of uh, chill hours to get the fruit to uh, come to fruition. Uh, it tolerates, from what I understand, down to 15 degrees Fahrenheit, although you don't really want it to get that cold, but it can tolerate that. What's interesting is I, I love this tree. I bought two of them only because uh, in the beginning I realized that these trees handled the winter here in central Florida very well which turned out to be a good thing. A lot of my tropicals and subtropicals take damage and I got to chop them down or start overgrowing. But these actually do very good in the, in the cold weather here in Central Florida. Uh, what you want to do is you want to prune them after they're done fruiting. About September, October when they're done, you pick the last fruit off. What I've actually fertilized these with is a 10-10-10 to get them going. And then later on, when they've reached the uh, size that I want them at, I switch to a 2 10, 10 uh, to cause fruit production on it. What I did find out is what I've come to learn from these. And I've been growing these, tr these trees now. The first one is uh, back in the main garden. You can't see it from here. But it actually took me almost five years to get fruit on this tree. And then when I bought this second one here, uh, which I believe was a good idea because I've been reading up on them, and they said that cross-pollination will help with your fruiting on the other tree. So I think that's what's helped. And this year, as you can tell in the bowl, we got a pretty good uh, amount for the first time after five years. Uh, regular watering is needed for the fruiting and uh, cross-pollination does help. So we had a good, uh, finally a good fruiting this year and I wanted to go ahead and show that to you. So let's go ahead and take a look here at the feoa. Now the feoa, the pineapple guava, is not an actual true guava. Uh, what they mean by that I don't know, but it's not like your real guavas, but you can tell the inside is reminiscent of a guava to some extent. And they have a fruity uh, smell to them. Uh, so far I haven't gotten a real sweet one, but they're, they're decent sweet. I mean they're not really sweet, but they're pretty good. What you can do is you take a little knife or a spoon and you kind of dig around the sides and then you kind of dig this out. And see if I can do this without dropping this. There you go. And there's all the meat out of that, all the fruit.
pretty good fruit. They're unique, they're different. Not everybody may like these. And like I said, there's different varieties. So depending on what you get, uh, may determine the taste of them. But these are pretty good. I, I, I like the fruit because they're unique, they're different. I like anything different, that's why here in my tropical fruit garden, my food forest, I've gotten a variety of fruits. And I'm gonna do a video soon talking about eating fruit all year long and how you can do that. And this is one of the reasons I got this because I know they start fruiting around uh, September, October is when they're ready to eat. So by the time you start eating some of your other fruit in the springtime that are ready, like your mulberries, you go through the summer and then you get into the fall months and you have the feoas that start coming off the plants around September, October. So most of the year you're pretty much eating fruit. So again, as you can see, we got a pretty decent amount. Some of these are smaller. I've had a few bigger ones that I already ate and tried. This one's decent size. This is by far the better size that we've had. But anyway, a unique fruit. Uh, they're easy to grow. They're, they're low maintenance, and I believe that there's not a whole lot of diseases that you have to deal with uh, like you do with some other trees. They're pretty much disease resistant as far as I can tell. Uh, low maintenance, again, just give them plenty of water, uh, prune them come fall time after they're done fruiting and a little bit of fertilizer and you're good. They start off smaller, a little bit slower to grow, but once you get them established, keep them watered and fertilized, they take off pretty quick. Uh, the other one that I have on the other side is wider than this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and trim the other one around its width and just keep it growing taller because again, when they're ripe, they fall off the tree, so I don't have to worry about trying to get up on the top. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video and our little talk about the feoa, the pineapple guava. I highly recommend this one. It's a good fruit. Uh, it's got some good vitamins and nutrients to it also. So anyway, uh, just wanted to tell everybody out there, God bless you. Trust in Jesus. He takes away your sins and can give you eternal life. And until we meet again, keep growing and God bless.